Davy Brennan was one of the original AFLW captains in 2017 and now the Richmond skipper is a two-time All-Australian player. She's also a massive inspiration to lots of people. Thanks for joining me today, Katie. No worries, Abby. Thank you for having me. So you grew up in Brisbane and I'm assuming the Aussie rules wasn't a super popular sport for girls in the late 1990s, so you were mostly playing against boys. Is that where you first learnt that it was really important to kind of be a strong female? Yeah, that's right, Abby. It wasn't, um, although the pathway is really developing now in Queensland and there's so much talent up there and, and um, yeah, as I said, the, the pathway is getting stronger and stronger. Um, it wasn't as strong back when, when I was going through and it was sort of the initial years of, um, of I guess, the, the youth girls and moving into the senior women. So I was really lucky to play for a great club in the Logan Cobras. That's where I, my journey started and um, we rallied really hard to get some girls teams up and running. Um, so it was great to be a part of that, but played with the boys up until under 14s and then um, yeah, moved into open women's from sort of a, a really early age before I moved um, here to Victoria. Do you think that leadership was something that you were kind of born with or was there something or some things that happened along the way that just made you really want to lead? Um, for me, I think I admired many leaders when I was growing up. I um, grew up in the, sorry about the helicopter going over, the Grand Prix. <laughs> um, I admired Michael Voss growing up. So I um, was obviously Carl, um, Carlton coach now, but he was playing for the Brisbane Lions and I was a, a Lions supporter. So um, he was a, a childhood idol um I loved Chris Judd and I, I believe he was sort of in a leadership role at the time so there's there was sort of a you know a couple of different male players that I definitely looked up to um but in the female space I loved Kathy Kathy Freeman I loved Susie O'Neill and, and some of these other um high profile women um doing really great things in other sports and I guess that's the beauty of of today that there's some young girls that can now look up to you know, the AFL footballers such as Taylor Harris and Darcy Vessio. And, and um, it's such a great thing that we now have this pathway that, um, yeah, the, the young girls can be AFL women's players and, and look up to AFL women's players amongst all the, you know, the other great athletes out there. So, um, yeah, leadership was always something I aspired towards. And I think that it was just um, you go on a, a bit of a journey um, through, you know, your, your junior years. And um, I was just always ambitious to, um, yeah, to, to give back and to and to really help, particularly the, the younger players in the group um, develop. So I really love it. I guess when I first started Her Way, I wasn't really aiming to have a profile or anything. I just kind of wanted to use my voice to spread word about stuff that I was really passionate about. And there might be some people out there who have a passion or a message, but they don't think that they can be a leader. What would you kind of say to them? Yeah, it's a, a really great um, example that you have there, Abby, and um, no doubt that you're inspiring many along this journey as well by just doing what you're passionate about. I think that ties into what my message might be is just to be yourself and to, um, yeah, just be passionate about whatever it is you want to do and pursue that. Um, everything is is possible. Nearly everything is possible these days. And if it's not possible, then you, you will find a way. So, um, you know, be yourself. Um, do what you love to do, be passionate about what you want to do. And um, by just doing that, you inspire those around you. And, and as I said, no doubt you've inspired many young people to pursue their dreams just like you have. So well done. So I mentioned earlier that you're a role model and mentor for so many people. What do you love about that? It is one of the best roles on earth. I love it so much. You know, it's a really exciting role, but more so it's so it's so exciting for the Oz Kickers, and it's such a a great experience for them. Um, you know, they get to to do some incredible things like present a medal on grand final day. Um, they often get out to to run on, as you mentioned, the the big stadiums and to to play at halftime. Um, and the biggest thing that we love about NAB AFL as kick particularly um, this year and going forward that it's all about team and it's all about um, you know picking a team for grand final day. Um, for that chance to hand out the Premiership medal. And um, Joel and I are super excited to be coaching for, for that for 2023. So um, it's a, yeah, as I, as I mentioned, it's a fantastic role. We're, um, I feel like I'm the luckiest person on the, on the planet to be able to do it. And it's just um, so much fun. So I was actually reading your chapter in Sam Lane's book Raw, and it said, Katie offers the kind of advice and direction that she would have loved when she was a kid lacking that kind of role model. I'm sure that there are a few, but what is one thing that you wish you knew when you were younger that you try to share now with other girls and women? 
Ooh, it's a very good question. Um, I think it would probably be just to um, to be yourself more. And I think, I guess I tried to live that when I was a young person, but um, just to continue to do that and um, to keep going after what it is you want to do. Um, and that if you work really hard, that things can, can happen. So um, yeah, working really hard and also having fun along the way. So I feel like, um, yeah, that there are a few of the things that, I tried to embody when I was a young person and that I really try and pass on to, um, to young people as well. But I feel like it's really, really good advice just to, to make sure you continue to enjoy yourself and um, yeah, just go after what you love. I also read how you kind of think that it's really important to see that being athletic and powerful is just as beautiful as posting photos in high heels or bikinis. What do you think that society can do to think differently about what's considered beautiful? I think we're making big strides towards that and it's, um, you know, celebrating great athletes and, and great people that are doing, um, you know, really good things in life. And I feel as if, um, you know, probably back when, when I was younger, I feel like it's changing now, but it, it probably wasn't celebrated enough to be strong and to be powerful. So I feel like we are really changing the narrative. And I think that is due to, the increase in, um, I guess, the the media and, and everyone contributing to, to women's sport and the celebration of women's sport and where we're going with that and how exciting it is for the future and and that now all these young women can see um, really powerful and strong women there on the sporting field um, and also we can see it in all different domains, whether it's, um, you know, in the construction industry or um, other male-dominated industries that are now um, really breaking through with women and that again we go back to the phrase that I've been talking about that anything is possible and that you just need to do what you love whatever that that is. I was actually also reading an interview that you did with the AFL Queensland website about 11 years ago when you were just 19 and they asked you what do you see for the future of women's football and you said I believe that there will be a national competition for females with every AFL club. That's a pretty cool thing for a 19 year old to say in 2012 and to also I guess believe it so confidently why were you so confident I guess and how does the reality of the AFLW now compared to what you thought it was going to be like I think I was confident in a sense that there was such a groundswell of um you know women playing the game and women loving the game and um you know I was just a, a small part of that but we were really gaining momentum and and that was probably just in Queensland at the time but knowing how all the other states were going particularly down here in Victoria um, and that every state is growing in their pathway and their opportunities. So it was only a matter of time. And um, I think that, you know, there's many women before us that have missed out on the opportunity, which is really sad, but most most of them are still a part of, of what AFL Women's is today or they have played a really significant role into getting it, it to this point um, and that there's, yeah, so much excitement for the future coming through. So I think I just believed in, in that and, um, yeah, that it was only a matter of time for it to... To happen and it's really exciting that it's here. And how did you feel the first time that you saw one of these, a footy card with your face on it? Yeah, it's um I don't know, I feel like you you don't really reflect on those type of things until um maybe towards the the end of, of your career or or when you yeah you see little mementos throughout the journey. But um it's really special and I think it makes me more excited that there's so many other young people um and players on on those cards and within the AFLW and it's sort of you you go to the the servo and you get your your footy cards and you get a women's player and a men's player it's just the way it's meant to be and um it's so great that we've finally we've finally arrived at at that location that it's you know that there's physical cards of of all these players coming through in the AFLW and then you know young young people um, young boys and girls having these football cards and, and trading them at school and just, um, you know, valuing the, the men's and the women's cards so highly. So um, once again, yeah, it's just so great to to be, um, you know, to have this progress in the women's league and, and for it to, to be such a, a feature in, in young people's lives. And I know the footy card is obviously pretty cool, but what's been the most kind of, I guess, surreal thing that's happened to you? Maybe when you've had your face on something or you've been able to do something that you never thought young Katie from Brisbane would be able to do? Yeah, there's, there's definitely moments along the way that you you do pinch yourself. Um, I think I get more excited about seeing um, my teammates or other people that I know on on things. Um 
yeah, particularly if it's your, your young teammates coming through and you see them on a billboard or you see them, their photos uh, just came to mind last night that we're at a, a Bashahuli uh, Ramadan dinner and our, one of our young players, um, Milzy Asia, she was, you know, she was front and center on a big, um, a big sign. And it was just, you just feel really proud seeing, seeing other people on those signs and, um, you know, seeing your teammates faces on, on whether it's billboards or big, big, um, you know, digital signs or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely celebrating uh, those little things along the way. So you've been a captain in the AFLW since it started and you also run a gym for women and you mentor other athletes. So you're obviously a leader and I know that you're very passionate about empowering the people that you do lead and mentor. What do you think makes a good leader when it kind of comes to empowering people? Ooh, I feel as if um, firstly it's about support and care um, and really sort of knowing the person and therefore you can you can help to support them and care for them. Um, we're really big on culture at our football club and just embracing the individuals. So that's huge on, on my leadership journey. And um, yeah, it's something that we try and really embrace at our football club. Um, and secondly, I just love seeing the potential in people. I love seeing people grow. So um, if you can play a small part in, in helping them grow or helping them develop or helping them play their role in the team, then I feel like that, that is leadership, that's influence. And um, yeah, they're the two things that I really, um, you know, I really try and embody and I really try and do whether it's on the field or off the field. Um, and it's a, yeah, a real pleasure to, to be a leader. And so just kind of going back to when you were a girl playing footy, some like senior women's team sometimes weren't even allowed to play on the ovals that the men trained on. And now you guys are playing in like the biggest grounds in Australia and you can even make footy your job if you want to. I know that it's been a lot of hard work and fighting from a lot of women to get here. What does that mean to the current players? Yeah, it means um, it means the great deal to the current players, particularly as I mentioned, the um, you know the old women that never got to experience uh, actually playing in AFL colours for premiership points in the AFLW, and no doubt there's so many along the journey that they're still a part of the AFLW, whether it's in a you know a, a official role or whether they are just supporters that they're still so much a part of it, and we you know we thank them for everything they've done um, to make it all possible for us to be out there and. I just think about, you know, the future, the future generations coming through are going to be doing the the same thing for, um, you know, that next generation coming through. So it's always, you're just always passing on the baton and doing your best to play your role within, um, you know, your team and, and that time that you have in the AFLW, it's an absolute privilege to, to play. And, um, you know, no doubt sort of a lot of women say that within their role in, um, in the sporting industry and you just try and make it a better place and, and leave it better for the next person coming through in, in those next generations. So, yeah, it's a, a real a real honour and, um, yeah, we absolutely love it. It's obviously a very exciting time for AFLW but also just other women's sports globally. Do you kind of have a theory about why it's all just kind of happening right now? Uh, it's a very good question, Abby. I feel like it's just the time it's, um, you know, I feel like we've waited long enough and that it, we're getting into a, you know, a really great time where, um, it's, it is all about diversity and, and inclusion in all forms, whether, um, whether it is in sport, whether it's in any other industry. And I think that we're just really starting to, albeit sometimes slow and sometimes, um, painful for, for some people, um, we are starting to progress and it's really exciting to see. So, um, you know, I feel like the the future, this is only the, the beginning really, like we're starting to see some incredible outcomes, whether it's, you know, bums on seats and crowds and, and some really great numbers within every sport. We've got, you know, the Women's World Cup coming up, which is really exciting for not only all of the, the soccer girls, but just the wider um, women's sport community and, and, and just Australia really. Um, you know, the rugby sevens girls are smashing it. The netball girls are doing great things. The cricket girls, it's just, you know, I think that um, it's so, so widely celebrated when you see other female athletes doing amazing things. It just inspires you and um, you just really celebrate it within whatever sport you're in. And um, yeah, it's just a, a really exciting time for the future. And just when you think back to your own experience being forced to stop playing footy at the under 14s in Brisbane, and you compare it to now where girls can basically play whatever they want as long as they want to, what kind of effect do you think that this can have for the empowerment of girls just in their lives overall? 
Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's, it's massive. And it goes back to what we talked about at the start, just being able to be whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. And I just think that that is where we're headed. Um, and it's such a, a great thing to celebrate for a young person um, to, to be able to yeah pursue anything they want to do. And it's just, it's really important for, um, for our progress. And it's just really exciting for the future. Well, that's all of my questions, Katie, but thanks so much for joining me. It was really nice to chat to you again. No worries, Abby. Thank you for having me. To support Hoei, visit the link in the description section.